Hello yogis, thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to do a nice level one, two vinyasa flow. I am outside in my apartment complex and it is such a gorgeous day. Um, it's nice and windy. There are people walking by. I don't know what will happen, but it'll be fun. It'll be an adventure. Um, so today we are going to use a bolster and a strap. So um, if you don't have a bolster at home, I don't either. This is my pillow that I use off of my couch. It's like nice, of, nice and firm and a little bit uh, thick and dense. Um, you can just grab pillows off of your bed or off of your couch, either one will work. We're just gonna use it to start in a supported bridge pose. And then also you'll want a strap. So if you do not have a strap at home, this is actually a yoga mat holder that I got at a festival that I taught at not too long ago. But um, you know, it really works nicely as a strap. Grab a belt though out of your closet. Any belt will do. If for some reason you don't have a belt, that's totally normal. Just grab a blanket and you can roll it up and just hook it around your foot. We won't use it for too, too many postures, but definitely in the beginning, we'll use both of our props. So we'll go ahead and get started today in the supported bridge pose, one of my favorite, favorite places to start. So we spend a lot of time in a seat and what happens when we're in a seat, our psoas muscles, get really tight and kind of compressed and the low back muscles get nice and stretched out and what that does is just creates an imbalance in the hips where it kind of always wants to like pull your body into flexion and sometimes your low back your invertebral disc can become compromised and the muscles aren't strong enough in the low back so they kind of like push out the back and what I love about this posture is it just helps to balance and find alignment in the hips. So it's stretching out those psoas muscles that are always tight and then compressing the low back, potentially even sending vertebral discs back into their space in the lumbar spine and preventing illness, preventing uh, dysfunction in the low back, basically. Even reversing. This is one of my favorite postures. Anyone who comes to my class knows it. We do it almost every class. Good. So go ahead and lie on your back. Place your block or your bolster or whatever you're using, your pillow, just right under your butt. So really we're looking for the sacrum bone, which is that nice and flat bone that's right above the gluteal crease, also known as the butt crack. Good. And then I like to walk my feet out long. That will just help to find a little more length in the psoas. If it feels like too much with straight legs though, just keep your knees bent. And if you're not feeling a whole lot, just go grab another pillow off of your bed and wedge it right under your butt. Good. So just walk your arms out nice and wide. Turn your palms face up. And start to notice the breath. <coughs> Excuse me. Without trying too hard, just notice the way the inhale and the exhale, just what effect it causes in the body, the way your body responds to that breath. Notice the inhale is a little bit cold. And the exhale is a little bit warm. Notice on the inhale how everything gets a little bit bigger expansive a little bit lighter and then on the exhale feel everything get a little denser a little smaller a little heavier and we'll start with one of my favorite breathing exercises it was actually one of the first ones that I learned um, this is so so good for combating anxiety depression just helping find groundedness so I learned it from dr. Andrew Weil it's the four, seven, eight breath. It's likely that you've practiced it before. It just helps to tell the body to calm down, basically. Said when we deepen the exhale, um, the body just is able to access, um, activate that parasympathetic nervous system and just find a little peace, a little bit of groundedness. So just bring the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth, just behind your front teeth. And then see if you can just release any tension in your tongue while maintaining that connection. Good. We'll inhale for a count of four, we'll hold it for a count of seven, and then we'll exhale through our mouths for a count of eight. So go ahead and exhale all of your air. We'll do three rounds. 
Take a big inhale through your nose for a count of four. Three, two, one. Hold it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the mouth for a count of eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for a count of four. Three, two, one. Hold it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last round. Inhale. Four, three, two, one. Hold. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Start to release that effort. Breathe normally, naturally, but try to maintain that really deep exhale. Notice a sense of calm and peace just flush through the body. Allow this breath to purify. With every breath, releasing fear, releasing anxiety, releasing anything that you're holding on to that doesn't serve your higher self. Just allowing that freshness, that pureness, that love, that peace flush through the body. We'll be here for about five more full breaths. to walk your feet back towards your hips and then windshield wiper your knees a little side to side. Good. From here, draw your knees in towards your chest. Start to make some bigger circles. Maybe just rock a little. Take some figure eights. Really just release the low back. And then from here, we'll set our left foot on the earth. Hook your strap around the sole of your right foot. So kick your right foot towards the sky or the ceiling and then walk your hands up your strap. Keep your shoulders nice and rooted, nice and connected to the earth. And then see if you can just tug on that strap a little bit so you feel like you're anchoring your right hip into the earth. And then if you still want a little bit more, straighten out your left leg, place it on the earth in front of you. Good. And now start to notice the depth of your breath. Notice if you're just filling up your chest or your shoulders. See if on the inhale you can actually fill up your belly first. Feel your belly rise. And then when there's no more room in the belly, feel it just overflow into the lungs. Exhale, release from the lungs, release from the belly. Good. Here we're starting to activate the kidney bladder channel really closely related to the root chakra this is where we store the emotion of fear the energy that keeps our bones nice and strong nice and healthy and this is that channel of the body that helps to keep us grounded and rooted So feel that pureness, that fresh breath flow through you, just activating this channel in the low back and the back of the leg. We'll be here for about three more full breaths. 
Maintain that deep belly breathing. your right hand up your strap send your left hand to the top of your left hip kick through the right heel and then allow that right foot to fall to the right you can reach your left arm out nice and wide and just rest your gaze over your left fingertips see if you can keep that left hip really rooted into the earth and just continue to breathe opening that inside of the right leg our yin channel Walk your left foot towards the earth next to your hip. We're going to cross our right leg over our left leg. So our, uh, out of our, uh, blah, the outside of our ankle is touching the top of our left thigh. Make sure you kick through the right heel and draw your toes towards your right knee. You can use your right hand to just encourage that knee out a little bit wider. And then from here, place your palms on the earth next to your hips. We're going to move through some three-legged bridge poses. Inhale, lift the hips. Yeah, exhale, release. This feels so good. Inhale, lift the hips. Keep the butt nice and tight. Exhale, release. Three more. Inhale, hips lift. And exhale, release. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Breathe in. And breathe out. Draw both knees to the chest. Rock a little side to side. And then start to rock front to back. Tailbone to shoulders. So we're going to gain some momentum here. We're going to meet in a chair pose. So standing at the top of our mat. See if you can plant your feet at the top. Come back up to standing. Good. From here, keep your heels rooted into the earth. Keep your tailbone tucking just slightly. And then become aware of your 10 toes pressing into the earth. Keep full awareness of the body. Keep the shoulders nice and heavy, falling away from the ears. One more full breath in. And send your hands to the earth, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Grab opposite elbows so your right arm's on top. Start to just rock a little side to side. And then try and release some of the tension in your neck. So just allow the weight of your head to actually tug on your neck muscles, creating space in between the cervical vertebra. That'll just allow blood and chi to flow to the brain. But release your hands to the earth. Slowly, mindfully roll up to standing one vertebra at a time. Inhale, palm sweep high, gaze lifts. Exhale, draw your palms to your heart. Good. Inhale, palms sweep high. Exhale, palms to heart. Inhale, last time, palms sweep high. Squeeze the glutes, send the hips forward, lift the heart high. Find a nice heart opener here. Make sure you're keeping the butt nice and tight. Those are the muscles that we want to build in our low back to keep our low back protected. One more full breath in. And hinge at the hips, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in, Ardha Uttanasana. Plant your palms, keep your right foot forward. Step your left foot back behind you. Good, squeeze the thighs towards each other. Good, keep that back knee lifted. Make sure your right foot stays directly underneath your right knee. And then hug the midline with your thighs, like try and squeeze it. Hover your fingertips off the earth, and then sweep your palms high. Good. Inhale. Reach your fingertips higher. Exhale. Shift your weight forward. Reach your fingertips back. Good. Inhale. Palm sweep high. Exhale. Fingertips reach back. Inhale. Exhale. Good. We'll do two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then plant your palms on the earth. 
Step your right foot back, high plank pose. Good. See if you can tap your left shoulder with your right hand. Yeah, drop your right hand. Right shoulder, left hand. And drop your left hand. Lift your right foot. And drop it. Lift your left foot. And drop it. High plank to low plank, chaturanga. Untuck the toes. Open through the heart, Bhujangasana, Cobra. Exhale, child's pose. Good. Rock the hips a little, side to side. Find your third eye, that connection to the earth. And then come back to that breath. Imagine that breath is the most cleansing energy, the most cleansing, purifying medicine. Every breath purifies the body. Walk your hands back towards your knees. Just cross your legs behind you. Come to your butt. Good. Find Navasana Bow Pose. So roll back. Option one, you keep your toes rooted and open through the heart. Option two, lift the legs. Keep the knees bent. Option three, straighten the legs and then draw the arms parallel to the legs. Wherever you are though, if your spine is rounded, see if you can open through the heart so it's like something's connected to the sternum pulling you upward. Two more full breaths. And find low boat. Keep the heels lifted and the shoulders lifted. Kick your feet like we're swimming. Break down to five. Keep your low back pressing into the earth. Four, three, two, and go ahead and cross your legs. Scissors, five, four, three, keep breathing, two, and one, release to the earth. Yeah, walk your feet back towards your hips. Till your tailbone towards the ceiling or towards the sky. Lift your hips off of the earth and then interlace your hands under your butt. Rock your shoulders under your chest. Bridge pose. Hug the midline with your thighs. Squeeze the butt. And breathe. Shield wipe your legs a little side to side. <laughs> Draw your knees to your chest. Take some big circles. Good. Move them in the other direction. And then send your right foot to the earth. Hook your strap around the sole of your left foot. So if you want a little bit more, walk your strap closer to the ball of your foot and you can uh, just find a little bit of extra length, maybe even stretching out the calf, the gastric medius. And really tug on that left hip, anchor it to the earth. Keep your shoulders rooted. If you want more, walk your right leg out long. Keep breathing. And then find the depth of your breath. See if you can invite it back into the belly first. Deep belly breathing. And then exhale from the lungs and the belly. Maintain this belly breathing. Notice how uh, long the exhale is. Notice if the inhale has become a little bit longer than the exhale. See if you can not quite four, seven, eight breath. We won't maintain that for our whole yoga practice. But see if you can keep that exhale just a little bit longer or at least the same length. Right. Couple more breaths. up your straps and your right hand to the top of your right hip let your left foot fall to the left 
anchor that right hip into the earth and reach your right arm out wide. Let your gaze rest over your right fingertips. Maintain the depth of your breath. Hold the awareness of the sensation in your body. Notice what you're feeling. You don't have to try to create labels. In fact, don't create labels. Just become the observer. Just noticing. One of my favorite quotes is, three of the greatest things that you could say are not I love you, but I hear you. And that's what we're doing during yoga. We're just listening to the body showing our body, showing ourselves the utmost form of love just by listening, by becoming that observer. Good. Draw your left foot back towards the sky. Bend into your right knee. And then again, just place that left ankle on top of your right thigh. Make sure, again, you're kicking through the heels, find the flexion in the foot. Place your palms on the earth. And then inhale, lift the hips. Good. Exhale, release. Inhale, hips lift. Exhale, hips drop. Three more. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Oh, I love this expression. I don't know if it feels as good for you. I hope so. Last one. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good. Drop both knees to the chest. Start to rock a little front to back. Again, we're going to roll right up into our chair pose. So gain a little bit of momentum. Plant your heels. Come all the way up. If you need to use your hands, that is a-okay. Just get up. Good. Lift your ten toes. Spread them and then press each toe into the earth. Our palms are facing each other. Good. Two more full breaths. Inhale, reaching through the fingertips and exhale, rooting through the heels. On your next exhale, hinge at the hips forward. forward. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, fold. Good, grab opposite elbows, left arm on top of right arm this time. Rock a little. Again, let the weight of your head just tug on your neck. And release your hands to the earth slowly mindfully roll on up to standing one vertebra at a time inhale palms sweep high gaze lifts exhale palms to heart inhale palms sweep high exhale palms to heart inhale palms sweep high squeeze the butt send the hips forward lift the gaze lift the heart good make sure you're squeezing the glutes we're squeezing the butt that will activate the muscles to protect the low back. And come all the way back up through center. Hinge at the hips, forward fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift. And plant your palms. Step your right foot back. Again, make sure your left foot's directly underneath the knee. And then lift the back knee. Keep the back heel lifted. Hug that midline really, really tight. Good. Hover the fingertips. Sweep the palms high. One full breath in. And exhale. Shift the weight forward. Reach the hands back. Inhale. Exhale. Three more. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep the core engaged. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last one. Breathe in. Breathe out. Place your palms to the earth. Step your left foot back. High plank pose to low plank. Chaturanga. Keep the elbows tight. Inhale. Lift the gaze. Good. Exhale. Child's pose. Start to notice the sensation of the body. Maybe you feel the heart rate start to speed up. Maybe you notice the breath rate start to speed up. Just observe.
today's challenge here is keeping focus, keeping awareness of the mind. That's all. The secret to meditation is really just focus. Can you stay present? Can you feel the body? When the mind starts to wander, it's not a failure. <laughs> it's just a practice. All right? When the mind starts to wander, just come back to the mat. Come back to the ten fingertips pressing into the earth. In the third eye. The ten toes. Notice the sensation of the air just moving over your low back, your shoulders, your arms. It's almost like we're becoming entranced by our own body. Just us and the body. And from here, go ahead and tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. See if you can squeeze your elbows towards your ears and then send your shoulders towards your hips. You can keep a nice bend into your knees or keep your heels lifted either, even. Really, we're looking for a straight line from our wrist crease to our tailbone. Good. On the inhale, lift the right leg high. On the exhale, draw your knee to your nose, engage the core. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, tap the right elbow. Inhale, right leg lifts. Cross your body, tap the left elbow. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step your foot between your hands, runner's lunge. Walk your left hand to the inside of your right foot. Reach your right fingertip high. Go ahead and roll out the wrist. Hugging the midline with your thighs. Good. Place the right hand back on the earth. Spin to the inside of your back foot. Reach your left hand high. Come all the way up for warrior two. We are in a two. So our hips are now squared to the side. See if you can tuck the tailbone and then draw the right knee out nice and wide. And then draw your chin in alignment with your shoulder and your wrist. It's like we're looking down the line of an arrow. Good. Two more full breaths. Each inhale growing. Each exhale falling a little deeper. One more inhale. And exhale. Inhale, reverse. Left arm drops, right arm sweeps high. Good. Exhale, warrior two. Straighten out the right leg, send the hips back, reach the right fingertip forward, find triangle pose, trikonasana. Left arms reaching high. Maybe lift your gaze towards the left fingers. See if you can roll your left hip out nice and high, right? So it's like we're sending the right hip towards the left and then drawing the left hip towards the right. Trying to stack them. Good. From here, send your right hand about a foot in front of your right foot. Lift that left foot off of the earth, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Good. Kick through the ball of your left foot. And again, try and keep that left hip stacked. Good. Two more full breaths. From the back foot to the crown of the head, being long and strong and engaged. Good. And then from here, bend into your right knee. Drop that back foot for your two. Inhale, reverse. Good. On the exhale, cartwheel the hands to the earth. We'll lift our back heel and then lift that left leg nice and high for standing splits. Yeah. Send the left foot to meet the right foot. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, palm sweep high, gaze lifts. Exhale, draw your palms to your heart. Inhale, palm sweep high. Exhale, palms to heart. 
good. Inhale, palm sweep high. Squeeze the butt, send the hips forward, lift the heart high. Good, squeeze the butt. That's the secret here. One more full breath in. Exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Plant the palm, step the left foot back so we want our hips to stay square to the front of the mat. We're setting up for pyramid pose. So you might want to take some blocks, right, and place your hands on top of those blocks. If it's in your practice, one of my favorite things to do in pyramid is find an interlacing of the hands. So you can send your right thumb on top of your left thumb and then reach your clasp fist high and then allow your chest to fall heavy. Allow your head to hang heavy. So good. Okay. And then from here, we're gonna move to a revolved uh, triangle pose, a revolved pyramid. So left hand down, right arm reaches high. And then if you wanna play, super awkward pose, but really, really fun. Walk your left hand forward, lift your left leg, uh, revolved, Ardha Chandrasana, revolved half moon. Good. Three. Two. And one. Bend into your right knee this time. Drop your back foot. So we're exactly where we started in this series, that revolved crescent lunge. From here, let's roll to the outside edge of our left foot. Stack our right foot on top. Vashisthasana, side plank pose. Good. Lift your hips higher. Three, two, modify as needed. One, high plank, low plank, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left elbow. Inhale. Exhale, right elbow. Inhale. Exhale, step it through. <laughs> Walk your right hand to the inside of your left foot. Reach your left hand high, twist. Good, go ahead and roll out that wrist. And then reach through the fingertips. So we should feel a little bit of pressure on that lateral aspect of our left leg. It's our iliotibial band, our IT band, the tendon that connects the knee to the hip or the hip to the knee. Good. Send your left arm back to the earth. Spin to the inside of your right foot. Reach your right fingertip high. Come all the way up, warrior two. Good. Five breaths. Again, tuck the tailbone. Feel connected to the breath with each inhale. Feel your spine growing. With each exhale, sink deeper. Don't let the mind wander. If it does, just come back to the breath. One more full inhale. Exhale. Inhale, reverse. Good. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, straighten the left leg, send the hips back, reach the left fingertips forward, triangle pose, trikonasana. Okay. So fingertip to fingertip, we're looking for one nice long line. From the tailbone to the crown of the head, one long line. And breathe deeper. Good. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Walk your left hand forward, lift that right foot off the earth, roll your right hip to stack on top of your left hip. Keep kicking through the ball of your right foot. Right, we know we're gonna come to that twisted variation of this posture. So notice how grounded this feels. Just celebrate it. Good, bend back into the left knee, drop the back foot, warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, cartwheel the hands to frame the left foot. Kick your right foot high, standing splits. Good. Step your right foot to meet your left foot. 
Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, palms to reap high, gaze lifts. Exhale, palms to heart. Feels so good practicing outside today. Inhale, and then cooped up. Exhale. Good, last one. Inhale, squeeze the butt, send the hips forward, lift the heart high. Yeah, feel the heart shine. One more full breath in. Exhale, hinge of the hips, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Plant the palms, keep the left foot forward, step the right foot back so our hips are squared to the front of the mat. The left leg straight, stands straight, pyramid pose. Good, so lengthen through the spine first and then fold. And if it's in your practice and you want to take that bind, Interlace your left thumb on top of your right thumb, lift your clasp fist, and then allow your head to just release. Good. And then from here, we'll come to revolved uh, pyramid pose, right hand down, left arm lifts. Draw your knee to your nose. Step your foot between your hands. Go ahead and drop your back knee to the earth. We're gonna come to lizard lunge. So take a step out wide with your right foot. Plant your palms on the inside of your right foot. And then you can stay right here. You can grab a bolster to recline onto. Or you're welcome to just come onto your forearms. Hang out. Yeah. This posture is so much fun, right? So if you feel so good here, stay right here. This is literally one of my favorite postures to hang out in. But I always like to play around a little bit in this posture because there's so many places we can go here. Okay, so if we've been working on splits a little bit, opening the back of the leg and the low back. So if you're ready to try for a little bit more, start to walk your right shoulder underneath your right thigh. From here you can, we're gonna try a couple different things. Let's go into splits actually. So walk your hands back so they're underneath the elbows. Hug the midline, tuck your back toe, lift your back knee. Okay, so from here you can stay, this is a lot, we feel it. Or you can start to lift your right foot off of the earth. Yeah. And then there's an arm balance variation of this as well. Flying splits, where you lift your back foot. Good. <laughs> Couple more breaths. Good. Go ahead and drop your right foot back to the earth. Walk your hands underneath your shoulders. Drop your back knee. Reach your right hand high. Bend into your back knee. Grab the outside edge of your back foot. Right? Your body might say no to this and that's okay. Yoga is not about twisting ourselves into some crazy yogi pretzel. It's about listening to the body, opening the channels of the body to move chi and blood through it. Yoga is full health care as long as you're not forcing yourself into things. It's about opening channels, moving blood and chi. Not about the yogi pretzel. Okay. 
Extend your hands to the earth. Tuck your back toe, lift your right leg. Bend into your right knee. Roll to the outside edge of your back foot. Flip your dog. All right, you don't have to. Lift your hips higher, reach your right hand towards the front. And then we're gonna go ahead and move through a vinyasa flow. Maybe you keep your right leg lifted. High plank to low plank, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, step your foot between your hands. Take a step out to the left. Again, make sure your foot's directly under the knee. Drop your back knee. Make your way to your expression of lizard lunge. You can release to your forearms. Good. Just take a moment before going into that uh, flying split to just let your left hip open up a little. Yeah. So yummy. <laughs> Good. Walk your left shoulder underneath your left thigh if you're playing with that bind. And then from here, we're going to tuck the back toe, lift the back knee, and then walk our hands back a little bit so they're underneath the elbows. And then from here, if you want, straighten out your left leg. Maybe lift your right leg. Good. <laughs> Wherever you go there, just play. Play and give your body what it needs. Maybe it wants playtime, maybe it wants stillness and lizard. Wherever you are, enjoy it. All right, two more breaths wherever you are. And then walk your hands back to the earth. Drop your back knee if it's lifting and lift that back knee. Reach your left hand high, reach around to the outside edge of your right foot. Yeah. We really want to feel a stretch now in the front of our right thigh. Big, big psoas stretch. Big quad stretch. Good. Find three-legged dog, send your left leg high. Bend into your left knee, roll to the outside edge of your right foot. Flip your dog. Good. And high plank, low plank. Maybe keep your left leg lifted. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Bend into your knees, lift your gaze. Hop, step, or float with your hands. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, fold. Good, slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Allow your head to lift last. Inhale, palms sweep high, gaze lifts. Exhale, palms to heart. Inhale, palms sweep high. Exhale, palms to heart. Inhale, palms sweep high. Keep your right hand lifted. Draw your left elbow to your hip crease. Come to the heel of your left foot or the ball of your left foot, lift your heel. We're gonna find dancer's pose, not our rajasana. Grab the inside of your left foot. Squeeze everything towards the midline. Actually try and touch your butt with your heel. And then hold that squeezing the midline feeling. Start to kick your left foot into your hands. Yeah. When you can't kick anymore, start to lean forward a little. Good. Keep your gaze on your dristi. Inhale, palm 
sweep high, gaze lifts. Exhale, palms to heart. Inhale, palms sweep high. Squeeze the butt, send your hips forward, lift the heart. Last one. Exhale, hinge of the hips, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale. Make sure the feet are hips distance here. Sink into the hips for chair pose, Uttkatasana. So from here, we're gonna come back down to our back, one of my favorite transitions. Sink into the hips a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Start to just hover your butt right off the earth. Three, two, and one. Drop your butt, find Navasana Vokos. All right, we've done this sequence. Sounds kind of familiar. This time, draw the palms to touch. Send the hands to the left, send the knees to the right. And then switch. And then switch. And then switch. Switch. Keep moving. Keep moving. And next time your hands come to the left, we're just gonna go ahead and pulse them. So just reach your fingertips to the top left corner of your mat. Then you can bend into your knees. Good. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Switch. Good. Pulse. Just a little. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one, come back to the middle. Low boat pose, we're not done. Keep your heels lifted, shoulders lifted. Kick your feet. Five, four, we know it's coming. Three, two, one. Scissor your legs, one on top of the other. Five, four, keep your low back pressing into the earth. Three, two, one, drop. Woo, walk your feet back towards your hips. Go ahead and lift your hips up for bridge pose or wheel pose. If you're taking wheel pose, walk your fingertips underneath your shoulders. Squeeze your elbows towards the midline. We always want to be hugging that midline. Maybe you lift to the crown of your head first. Maybe you pop all the way up. Yeah. Squeeze the bind. Squeeze the thighs. Squeeze the elbows. Breathe. Two, and one, let it go, woohoo, walk the knees a little side to side, so good, draw the knees into the chest, man I miss practicing with you guys so much, rock a little, let the knees fall to the right, Send the left arm out wide. Let the gaze rest over your left fingertips. Just breathe. We'll be here for about five breaths. Feel everything start to slow down. Unwind, rock a little side to side. Squeeze the knees tight, let your knees fall to the left. Right arm out wide, let your gaze rest over your right fingertips. Unwind. I love this place to practice though, my goodness. I'm gonna film more classes out here for sure. Happy baby, grab the outside edges of your feet. 
draw your knees towards the earth next to your chest. See if you can send your tailbone towards the earth. Good. And then if you want to rock a little, go ahead. our way to an inversion of choice. It can be waterfall, it can be handstand, headstand, shoulder stand, anything that you feel safe practicing but that will be there to assist. If you're trying a new inversion, a wall is your best friend. Practice of the wall, definitely. I'll try to do more uh, videos too of breaking down postures but one thing I'll tell you if you're practicing headstand right now one of the um, biggest mistakes that I see in headstand if you're doing like a cradle the head version or even a tripod I see the elbows like way way far out wide just like every other posture we always want to hug that midline squeeze the bondos right when we hug that midline we can stabilize everywhere Right, so in headstand, I'll do a tripod. Right, something that I'll see is hands will be way out there or elbows will be way out here. If you stack, if you get your hands shoulders width, elbows under the shoulders, right, you can really hug that midline and find stability. Yeah, I'll definitely do a um, just like a short posture practice breaking down headstands. Good. Take a couple more breaths wherever you are. still rooted our head is protected and then we'll find Baddha Konasana bound angle or diamond legs Walk your arms out nice and wide draw your palms up <laughs> if you need any other counter postures please take them most definitely when we practice in the same room together always that tail end of class I kind of open up as yogi playtime I like to give options, but yoga is about listening to the body. And so if your body needs anything else, anything different than what I'm offering, I always like to open up that space. And just notice the depth of the breath. Notice the connection of your body to the earth. Notice the air moving over you. And we'll finish with that four, seven, eight breath. So bring the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth, just behind the teeth. Exhale all of your air. Inhale through the nose, four, three, two, one. Hold seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale through the mouth, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Last round. Inhale. Four, three, two, one. Hold. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Release that effort. Start to feel the breath move naturally. 
organically. Our breath, with our healing power, is pure, pure energy. Every breath in cleanses you, nourishes you. acknowledging each other. The divine in you, the love in you, the strength, the wisdom, the peace in you. 